morning, Ori and Esmeralda. Hungry? Daddy and Esmeralda eat some, too. You all jawing at them hogs again, Luke? Yes, sir. Well, quit it and get back to your chores. Yes, sir. <laughs> He's just worried about the rain. You know what I think? I think you talking to those hogs helps them. Here, chicka chicks. Here, chicks. got these newfangled moving picture shows but with cowboys and white hats <laughs> but back then in Montana territory in the real west it wasn't always so easy to tell the heroes from the villains and sometimes just when you got a fellow pegged as a snake in the grass well, they turn around and risk a bullet for you it was the damnedest thing.
Easy. Yeah. Hold on. What the hell happened here? Yeah, your daddy's name, I know. What about your ma? What about you? You gonna, you gonna tell me yours? Hey, wait. Wait. Now your folks are gone. Okay, you can't stay here. Got any other kin? I'm just trying to help you. Now, I live in Curtis Wells. I believe you'll be safe there. Come on. I'll lay you four bits on the dollar. That cloud there reaches that ridge yonder before that one does. All right. You see those rocks down there? Don't you ever shut up. Where I'm headed ain't worth talking about. Thought we could at least enjoy the trip. You sorry son of a bitch. That's what the judge said. I just held the horses. No one was gonna get hurt. Cause some damn fool gets trigger happy. I gotta spend 30 years in jail. It don't hardly seem fair. <laughs> Marshal? Marshal Fowler! Damn. You know, some say my biscuits aren't half bad. I ought to at least give it a try. You know, I had a friend, Augustus McRae. Now, there's a man who could bake a biscuit. <laughs> He's the one who taught me. Judging from you, however, I guess I didn't learn so good. Well, I'm just going to keep talking until you got a mind to answer me. Now, that's something Gus always used to do to the captain. All right. See there? Well, I'll stop John now. Not much use to it. Believe it or not, I'm most times quiet like you. Whew. Hey, where the hell are you going? Hey, now, come on back. I ain't gonna hurt you. Hey, I'm not gonna hurt you. Now, what were you thinking? You could have drowned. I don't suppose you'd have a room for the night. Yes, but... Look, I got money. I can pay. Well, you're gonna have to leave that gun here at the desk. Fair enough. You're a marshal. Well, why didn't you say so? Forgive me. Caleb. Caleb Fowler, Territorial Marshal. Ida Grayson. Oh, 
And what brings you to Curtis Wells? I was escorting a prisoner. A troublesome sort and tried to jump me. I left him back out on the trail. Don't ask me anymore. It's not the sort of thing a lady should hear. So, how much would the softest bed and the hottest bath in this most magnificent establishment set me back? <laughs> For you, sir, absolutely nothing. Well, thank you, ma'am. Very kind. I'm sure I don't deserve it. <laughs> if you think you can, try. Grayson, was that a, a gunshot? Uh, no. Are you all right? Yeah. Well, um, good night, Marshall. Good night. Wake up. Wake up. It was just a bad dream. Well, you better get up. Got a lot of ground to cover. Get up. I could be wrong, but I believe there's an O in Montana. Oh. Right. I'm sorry, I just can't seem to concentrate today. When was Newt due back? Yesterday. A man has to earn a living. I know that, Father. It's just that when he took the job of the livery, we thought he'd spend more time in town. I barely see him. Oh, he'll be back soon. You're not going to do this to me again. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, I've missed you. Is this any way to treat a new bride? What took you so long? Well, I ran into some trouble. Oh, really? I'll show you trouble. His folks were killed. Oh, dear God, what happened? Can't say for sure. I, I know he must have seen it, but he just won't talk about it. Um, son, this is my wife, Hannah. You'll be safe with her. Hello. Would you like to go inside? 
You can, you know. Come on, let's go. Marshal? What can I do for you? Well, I found a little boy out on a farm, ways out of town. His folks were murdered. Well, that's terrible. Uh, what are you going to do about it? Well, I'll, uh, I'll put in a report as soon as I get back. Well, don't you want to go out there? At least take a look? What for? They're dead, ain't they? Maybe you're right. Where is it? I'll stop by on my way to Miles City. Well, Miles City's in the other direction. Their place won't be easy to find. I'll take you there myself. Let me just get my horse. Uh, that's real kind of you, but I... It looks like you've got yourself a deputy. <sighs> well, la di da Found him laying out right over there. Boy seeing his own parents shot? What kind of world do we live in? He must have rid right through here. Gone out over that ridge. Say it's about a dozen horse thieves, most likely. There was 14. And you're right, they did go that way. Trail's probably cold by now. Yeah, it's still worth taking a look. Uh, you go ahead. I'm, I'm going to look out this way. Well, suit yourself. Get that. Well, they don't need it. <clears throat> You're right. <clears throat> Man gets hardened after a while. <clears throat> uh, how about you? You find anything? Trail ended up at some rocks. I don't understand it. Hell, yeah, let's just. Go back to town. My thinking exactly. All right. Give it a try. <laughs> you have to push really hard. She's stubborn. Be careful with that machine, son. I think you did very well, don't you? Uh, that's a start. Print it. Yes, sir. That's very good, Luke. Now, you've been a big help to me today. I'm sure you have. It ain't easy working out in this heat. Why don't you go give uh, Sugar some oats? That's 
it. You got away with horses. <laughs> Out here, that's as good as gold. Boy, you got yep. some fine looking horse flesh here. And this bunch for sale? They were. The uh, army bought the whole lot of them. What a waste. It's gonna be a fine haul. Should I tell the boys we's working tomorrow? You do that. I'm gonna go find myself a nice hot tub. Anybody working around here? <laughs> well, well, hired help's getting younger every day. Why don't you take my horse, boy? What you staring at? Huh? This one here's my favorite. You feed him and you water him now. Get. Excuse me. Uh, a friend of mine's in there picking up her laundry. I thought I'd take a gander. You just about done your gandering? <sighs> Nothing like a nice hot bath, I always say. <laughs> Shows a man who takes pride in his appearance. You can't judge a man by his clothes. Of course, others will tell you, clothes make the man. The way I see it, it's the man inside that counts. Then again, we could all be wrong. <laughs> Enjoy your tub, sir. Tablecloth's ready. Philly Poe, or should I come back tomorrow? Ready. Just have to fall. Boy, you think I just throw money around? What the hell is this, Mark? Excuse me, sir, but I was here first. I fix it in a minute. You will fix it now. Where are your manners? Get the soap, boy. You got a big mouth, lady. Excuse me. Drop your sheets there, Marshal. This doesn't have to end in bloodshed, stranger. Just walk away. A lot of men made the same mistake you're about to make. None of them live to talk about it. I'm waiting for the soap, Chinaman! Supposed to be the law. You want to clean up your town? Huh? This is how you do it. Garbage like this is show them a lesson. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to me. This ain't right. You're not such a big man now, are you? Yeah. Tell your friends Marshal Caleb Fowler did this to you. And if you or your like ever come back here, 
The next time you leave, we'll be in a box. Yeah, we'll see who's in the box, Marshal. Yeah! yeah! Myself, I feel sorry for the mule. <laughs> to the mule! To the mule! You know, I've run into more than my share of type situations, and I've found the secret is to keep a steady head and a cool hand. Yeah. <laughs> Marshal, can I talk to you outside? Well, hell yes. I'm a damn good talker. <laughs> <laughs> and a damn good marshal. <laughs> Who are you? What are you talking about? My guess is there's a dead marshal out there somewhere and you killed him. I never hurt nobody. Things have never gone right for me. I never had a lick of luck my whole life till I come here. Sure, I lightened a few wallets, marked a few cards. Does that make me a bad man? Where'd you get that badge then? I was on my way to jail. Marshal just killed over. Just like that. Must have been his ticker. I said more words over his grave than he said to me the whole time I knew him. What are you gonna do? What choice have I got? I gotta turn you in. Newt. Maybe I didn't handle things so good. But this is the first chance I've ever had to turn my life around. Even if it's not here, I can do some good somewhere. I know it. Oh, there you are. Luke's gone. I can't find him anywhere. Well, don't worry, we'll find him. You, you go uh, check up in around there, and I'll go look over here a piece. All right. I'll deal with you later. My savior's arrived, huh? Hi, boy. Untie my hands. Those who hesitate live to regret it. What you doing up here, young man? Hey, I didn't say you could go now, did I? Where do you want to go back to your mama? Want to go back to your mama? Oh, do you? Do you? What? What? If I ask, uh, where are you going? Looking for the boy. Oh. I see. Well, be careful. Don't worry. I'll be back in time for breakfast. Well, good night, Caleb. Good night. I found him anywhere. He couldn't have gone that far. I don't know. I, maybe he needs some time. Maybe he doesn't want to be around people right now, would you? He's just a little boy. I know. He's out there! He's out there! It's him! Oh, my God. He's out there! Oh. It's him! Who? The man!
been humiliated. <coughs> it is now time for some redemption. He will pay. Finally asleep. It's been a long night for all of us. Whatever he saw up there, scared him half to death. I made some hot tea. Oh, thank Bless you. you. Got some for me? We certainly never expected to see you again. Wouldn't have either. Except I got some news you ought to hear. They ain't our horses. Let them have them. Yeah. Wait. Quiet. You know as well as I do, it's not just the horses he's coming back for. Marshal. <clears throat> got one big advantage here. We know they're coming. That's right. The way I see it, the only chance we got is to be ready and surprise them. Yeah. I'd have to agree with the marshal. How many of you men are going to stand up with us? I will. I will. You'll do well today. I don't want to do well today. I don't even want to be here. I'm no hero. I don't know one end of a gun from another. I'm going to die today.
to come, Marshal. Men, throw down your guns. And we don't want no trouble. That's a mighty pretty dress you got on. I'm ready to go now.
Luke, your aunt in St. Louis. She'll take really good care of you. But uh, if you ever miss the planes, Newt and I will always be here. You remember that? It'll get easier, Luke. Quite a man, wasn't he? Yes, he was. Courageous, a man of integrity. Wouldn't you agree? Yes, I, I guess I would have to. Whoever he was, wherever he might be, Something good about me? Well, not much really came to mind. <laughs> How you feeling? I'm pretty damn sore. You're pretty damn lucky. <laughs> A lot luckier than you thought. I guess so. Where are you headed? I don't know. A lot of towns to clean up. I believe uh, Marshall Fowler's been laid to rest. Things best if you make a fresh start. It wasn't my fault. If he was two inches from your nose and begging to be shot, you'd still miss him. I'll bet you two dollars I could bag more game by nightfall than you. Well, I don't generally take charity, but in this case, I will. I'll meet you at the watering hole by nightfall then. I'll, I'll warn the trees you're coming. You do that! Hey, Austin. What? Be careful. Don't worry about me.
Back then, we had what was called frontier justice. And it was about as rough and unpredictable as everything else out west. I guess one of the reasons I got to writing was to try to make sense of the things that seemed pretty senseless. Take the story of Little Bear. There's a man who saved my scalp which is one of the quickest ways known to make a stranger into a friend. Taneko inok kayo kayo A bear Ah Kayo Inok 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 small Ah a little little bear Inok inok kayo Ah ah Nitaneko nut Nitaneko nut Yeah nut Ah sukapi Ah ah you see, ram. You see, uh, ram. Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Yeah, yeah. Me stucky. Me stucky. Me stucky. Mountains. Ah, uh, me stucky. Mountain. Yeah. Ah, uh, me stucky. All right. Allow me. Mr. Mosby. I assume you're taking these to your father's office. Yes, thank you. I can manage oh, these. nonsense. I don't believe I've had a chance to congratulate you since your recent wedding. I've always believed that life only just begins when two people marry. We haven't seen you in a while, Mr. Mosby. No, unfortunately, I was called away on business. It does feel wonderful being back, however. Something about the air. I assume you've heard about the robbery? Yes. I believe a man died. It's a tragedy. Hiram Cobb was a dear friend. I'm truly sorry. Well, here we are. Thanks. You excuse me, I must check into the hotel. Good day, Mrs. Cobb. Justice and the 
redress of wrongdoing, Judge J.T. Calder presiding. Now I know some of you think of me as hard. Some of you think of me as ruthless. Well, I've been to Deadwood and I've been to Dodge City and let me assure you, I am the only thing that stands between you and anarchy. It sounds like you're running for office, Jonathan. Well, forgive a little speechifying, but the truth of the matter is, this is a lovely little town. Now, this lovely little town was just attacked by a vicious band of thieves. Those bank robbers murdered one of your leading citizens. Are you gonna tell me you don't need a jail? If living in Curtis Wells means living in fear, then maybe this isn't the town I thought it was. Been waiting long? Long enough. What? What do you mean, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. It's a little bear. Friend. <laughs> I guess you owe me that two dollars in. Hey! Hey, boy. No, I'm sorry, I didn't see the bottle there. Kind of clumsy, ain't you? I said I was sorry. You got a fine horse out there. You want him? <laughs> you know, we're just, uh, we're just passing through, resting up a bit like you. We'll be moving on. We got a long ride back to Curtis Wells. Get that stunken engine out of here. He's with us. You got bad taste in friends, boy. Come on. Let's just go. No, no. Let's do it. He wants it. I give it to him. Come on. Yeah, you. That's far enough. Hold it, mister. Let's just leave it right here. We're leaving. We're gonna go our separate ways. Sorry, folks. Thank you, ma'am. That's right hospitable of you. And you couldn't wait to get home. I wasn't hungry until I smelt the food. We can still make it back before nightfall. Anna has got a hold of you. Next thing you won't be hunting at all, just riding through town in a buggy. Ah, Sukapi. Statsnam Sukapi. Kinach Mamir. He was trying to kill you. Just saving your life. You murderer, son of a bitch!
Lord, I've missed you. I missed you too. What's the matter? faces. Fortune being fickle, it can always be reversed. It's been my experience that fortune as good as yours is often assisted by design. Are you suggesting that I would cheat Judge J.T. Rope Calder? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Makes me uncomfortable just thinking about it. <laughs> well, that's it for me. Oh, Mr. Thompson, please. The, the game's of no moment of our host and the owner of this fine establishment to pass. Have another drink. Let me stake you to another hand. I really shouldn't. Ah, but the... I do believe that running out on a game and disappointing your friends is a hanging offense. Isn't that right, Judge? <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen. Robert. What a pleasant surprise. Uh, Join us, please, gentlemen. Come sit down. It's cold out. Thank you. I hardly knew him. There was something about him, though. He was... He was good. He was... He saved your life? I owe him. And I... I don't know how to pay him back. This place has tremendous potential. Don't you think? Put a bed upstairs, I could call it home. <laughs> we waited at the border for three days, Clay. Why didn't you show up? It's the same reason you're here now, isn't it? I'm getting to like it here, though. You're out of your mind. <laughs> or perhaps. I don't understand you, Clay. You see, we robbed their bank. A man was killed. Nobody can prove anything. And how long do you think it'll take before someone pieces that together? You worry too much. Always have. You're gonna destroy your life, my woman, Clay. What life is that, exactly? I'm leaving now, Clay. I suggest you come with me while there's still time. Robert. Whatever my future is, I think it's here. My horse was supposed to be groomed and fed. Russ is over there and the vaults are in the bucket. I paid you a dollar to tend to my horse, not your thirst. Why, well, you rebel bastard. Do not talk to me! Hey, where the hell are you, mister? You seen... Ah. Let go of me! Man, he's dead! Man, he's dead and we got his killer! What? Clay! Oh, 
Where were we? That was three years, man. You have to take it. He don't need a big time. I knew the tape there was before I was in the water back in the water. Notice, you are all cordially invited to the hanging. The latest methods in the art of scientific strangulation will be utilized to make the surroundings cheerful and the execution a success. Promoting a hanging like a sideshow. I want to run this. What's this? Newt saw murder. Well, aren't you going to do anything? Oh, well, the law is very complicated. Habeas corpus, uh, writs of mandamus, that sort of thing. Well, the person was killed. I have a serious murder case to adjudicate here. I've also got a gallows to build. I'm a very busy man. Well, excuse me, Judge, but this is serious, too. <sighs> yes, of course it is. All right, where is this murderer? Now. I'm going to need witnesses, and I'm going to need evidence. Young man, see, you can't have a trial unless you got a suspect. gentlemen. I don't suppose you'd mind my visiting with the prisoner. Oh, that scum ain't worth wasting your breath on. <laughs> oh, I agree. I don't know. I thought it might amuse me. Robin, are you all right? Never been better. It was an accident, Clay. It wasn't my fault. This town is pretty riled up. You can't get me out of here, can't you? <laughs> I'll do my best. Now you're starting to scare me, Clay. We've been through a lot worse than this together. I did not ask you to come here. You took it upon yourself to do so. thinking about what you said about someone connecting us to the bank robbery. You have really made a mess of things, Robert. gentlemen. Yes. You know, I can't recall the last time I sat down to cards and the likes of such respectable gents. Appreciate the invite, Miss Mosby. Well, listen, a certain celebrity befalls the captor of such an infamous prisoner, and I have been most impressed with your handling of the situation. As a matter of fact, I'm going to need a bailiff tomorrow. You might be interested? Yes, sir. Done. Deal, Mr. Mosby. This time, please have a little consideration for my aid. <laughs> Tell me, Judge, I've heard there was a time when the uh, right sum of money could tip the scales of justice. <laughs> it would take a good sum indeed to deprive these folks of their entertainment. <laughs> Let me go. I ain't no whore. Maybe you should be. Money's is better. <laughs> and what would you know about whores? I want to wash that pretty mouth. All red. Well, with uh, nothing left to wager, Mr. Tompkins, it looks like you're out of the game. Damn. My luck's turning, too. I know it. Hmm. Your deal, Judge. All right, here we go. Wait. I'm in. 
Now put up my saloon. Ought to be worth 5,000 easy. Uh, that's a lot of money. Well, I have no objections, Mr. Tompkins, but I fear it's none too wise. Deal. You play a very good game, Mr. Mosby. But the stakes are such that lives could be affected. The meek may be blessed, Judge. But only the bold grow rich. Where are you going? I'll see you when I raise. Well, that's everything. Are you certain, Mr. Tompkins? It takes a lifetime to build, but only a second to lose. You get nervous, Mosby? Well, maybe he isn't, but I am. <laughs> now, here's a man who stands to win or lose everything on the draw of a card. Kind of like Judgment Day. I call. Three aces. Three sixes. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> and two jacks. I'm sorry. saloon. <laughs> Not to mention more money than I know what to do with. Let me see if I understand you, Mr. Mosby. <laughs> Are you offering me a bribe for Mr. Shelby's release? He's a killer, Judge. What possible reason would I have for doing that? None at all. It's just that you should know man came to see me today. He said he recognized a saddle that was used in a bank robbery here, Confederate Army issue. And it seems that that saddle belongs to Mr. Shelby. <laughs> this case is getting more and more interesting all the time. Buy you a drink. No, thanks. Ain't from hereabouts, are you, boy? You all from back east? I know what you are. What's that, mister? You all big city-fied piece of horse dung. here and right now. I understand your feelings, Mr. Call, but I just acquired this establishment, and I'd rather not have to clean his blood off of my floor. <laughs> oh, good. You're here. I got your suspect. It's him. He's the one that killed Little Bear. What? I don't know where I got that from. You know damn well. You want a piece of me? 
Is that him? Good Lord in heaven, can a man even play cards in peace? We're going to settle this properly right here and now. Court is in session. J.T. Calder presiding. Well, now, I looked up, and that's when I saw this man. And he was going to shoot little bear. I couldn't get my gun, and he shot him. That's it. So what you're saying is it was an ambush? Yeah, an ambush. What about you? What do you got to say for yourself? I know what in hell he's yapping about. Stand up when you talk to me. Sorry, Judge. Now, feels real bad about what happened, but this is how it was. I saw smoke from a fire, and I rode towards it. I'm from about here to across the street away, and I see this big buck engine holding a knife over that fella there. I just did what I thought was right. So you're saying you thought you were saving his life? That's the truth of it, Judge. He's I lying. swear. You're lying. And you're saying the engine wasn't holding the knife? Well, no. But, Austin. Well, was he holding the knife? Well, or was sure it? he was, but he's twisting Ain't everything around. Was, he Judge. rode in. It was. Oh, shut up, all of you. Order in the court. I've heard all I need to hear. There's certainly no doubt but that there's some doubt. And that doubt is reasonable. Case dismissed. What? No, no. No! You wouldn't dismiss it if it were a white man that got killed. Oh, no word out of you, and you're going to have 30 days without sunshine. Now, this court is adjourned. I just want y'all to know how sorry I am. Thank you. It's all been a terrible, terrible mistake. Ma'am. New dog! Get him out of here and take him someplace where he can cool off. The sun. I didn't believe a word you said. But you got the benefit of the doubt this time. Now I want you out of this town by sunup. Do you understand? Yes, sir. certainly was an eventful day. It was autumn when my mother came down with the fever. There was a lot of work to do with the statesman. And as usual, she didn't want to worry father. She made me promise not to tell. And I didn't. When the end came, it came so fast. He didn't have the chance <laughs> to say goodbye. I had to tell him. He was at the press. And he just looked at me. Do you know what was on his face? Surprise. <laughs> if I had the chance to change that, I would. But I can't. And neither can you. You have got a good heart, new call. Don't let this or anything else ever change that. It's 
get some rest. Come on. What do you want? In case y'all want me, I'll be at the way station. And one other thing. Wasn't no mistake. <laughs> I had fun killing that engine. That's nice shooting, dude. Well, thank you, Judge. I did some of that in my day. Knowledge of the law didn't mean much if you couldn't back it up. The way I see it, the law is what don't amount to much. Oh, the law is okay. Billy Sweet got lucky. He killed your friend, and he got away with it. Now you go after him, you're liable not to be so lucky. Well, I'll take my chances. And end up like him? This is different. I don't seem to be getting something across to you. We already had a trial. If you see fit to overrule me, I'm going to take it real personal. All due respect, Judge, there's right and there's wrong. And what happened was wrong. I wouldn't like to hang you, Newt, but I will. Something like that. Compliments of my new saloon. to see me. Doesn't look good, Clay. I know. I'm sorry if I complicated things for you. <laughs> you remember the pond out back at Hatton Willis, uh, Brown's Point? It was the summer of the drought. The water could have been more than five feet, and you dove in anyhow. Remember? <laughs> you didn't come up right away. I was almost certain you were gone. <laughs> you had to be the wildest 12-year-old in the parish. <laughs> well, the luckiest. <laughs> of course, oh, that seems to have left me now, doesn't it? You are always the best soldier in my command, Ronald. Dying in battle is one thing. Dying alone at the end of a rope in a backwater town like this, that is not an end I'm prepared to endure. I'm sure you understand.
unlikely. You've been to see the prisoner again, Mr. Mosby. I had a little chat with him myself, you know. I heard. Hard being in a cell like that, chained up like an animal. Even the bravest man begins to feel his own fear. Robert Shelby survived a year in the Union prison camp, not to mention the devastation of a way of life, and he did so with honor. Trial begins at two. Shouldn't take long. My guess is that we're gonna have a hanging by dusk. Hey! Shelby! By day's end? You're gonna be tried and hung. <laughs> gonna have me some fun. Why don't you take a break? Hey, Sweet, since you went to the trouble of inviting me out here, I didn't want to disappoint you. I know you're in there. Uh, I was just taking a nap. Whenever you're ready.
This wasn't no mistake, neither. Judge Calder. Mr. Mosby. You leaving town so soon? Oh, we'll meet again. You know, you're almost too diverting to hang. You planning on having the whole town for dinner? Maybe. Uh, Mr. Mosby, I didn't get a chance to thank you for, uh, Yesterday in the saloon. Happy to help. Your husband's a good man, Mrs. Cole. And I hear you're the new owner. Hmm. <laughs> you must be planning on staying. Well, my luck's been good here. <laughs> I hope it continues. Indeed. I found out early that you can fight for justice, but you can't always win. And in the end, just knowing what's right inside yourself sometimes has to be enough. I need some more nails. <laughs> We're out. What? Looks beautiful. Well, I figure we can afford to make a pretty good start on this roof. <laughs> I figure we can afford to finish this whole house. Well, not quite, Hannah. You began something new. The money my mother left us, it's more than enough. Well, we ain't touching that. Of course we are. Well, if it's all the same to you, I believe I can provide for my own wife. Now, we ain't taking your mother's money, and that's that. It's my... It's our money, Newt. And what difference does it make if it helps us finish the house? It makes a difference to me. Well, I'm not spending the next two years in the Lonesome Dove Hotel. I don't make much money at delivery, but it's enough for us. I don't understand you, new call. You are be being stubborn and foolish and selfish. Well, I guess that's just the way I am. I'm going to town. I'll be back later. Well, go. I'm going. Camp, South City Town. All right. You guys take it away. Tap turn. Mrs. Coffee, I'll get a couple of my men to set your tent next to the Tyler's. I don't need no help. And I don't take kindly to being forced out of my own home. Well, it's for your own safety, ma'am. Believe you me. Move out!
I was raised by Gus and the captain to be bound by duty and honor and to do as right by them as I could. My wife Hannah was raised the same. There was one time when we both had to put that upbringing to the test and risk our lives trying to do right. I take it you're the editor of this paper, sir. Yes, I am. Well, we'd appreciate it if you're on that in your next edition. You might have a problem getting a scout around here. These people are mostly merchants, farmers, cattlemen, and the like. What do you need him for? We're going after the Winfield gang, sir. It's about time somebody did that. Now, believe you me, we've seen what they can do. Destroying isolated farms, murdering innocent people in their path. We'll get them. How many more people can you remove for their own protection, Captain? We're getting close, sir. It won't be much longer. I'll print it on the front page. I'll also make up some notices and distribute them around town. You never know. Thank you, sir. Charm, Mrs. Coffee. Mount up! You have yourself a very nice day. Yeah, never knew an army scout got five dollars a day. That's what they pay their officers, I reckon. Much obliged, Mr. Hackett. I knew your nails. What's all this? This is a picnic. I thought it might be nice to have a civilized meal at the house. You don't like the idea? No. I think it's great. Job came up. Scout for the army. You mean you're leaving? Now. I know it's sudden. But the pay is five dollars a day. I told you before, Newt, we don't need this money. You were just being stubborn. It's dangerous. There's a bad bunch of men there after Hannah. They need a scout. Oh, I see. What happened to their last one? I don't know. You are the only person I've ever met who's as stubborn as me. <laughs> I guess that's saying something. You do what you have to do, new Cole. But you come back to me quick, you hear? An army couldn't stop me. Pull those lines taut now, soldier. 
You hear me? Hey! Get out of my way. Thank you for coming out, Mr. Call. We're having our troubles here, as you probably know. It's never easy on this kind of a campaign. So, tell me about yourself, Mr. Call. Well, I was raised by Texas Rangers, taught tracking by a man called Dietz. I reckon he knew everything there was to know about scouting. Certainly uh, none better than the Texas Rangers. A little wild, but uh, quite effective. Colonel, may I? Carry on, Middleton. You ever scout for the Army before? I believe I just answered that question, Captain. Well, then what was your last employment? Liver is stable, Curtis Wells. Colonel, might I suggest we consider other candidates? We need an experienced scout, not a stable hand. I'm experienced. And I'm done saying it. I've heard enough. Job is yours if you want it, Mr. Call. But let me tell you something. About a month ago, we lost our scout and three of our men in an engagement with this Winfield gang. Since then, we've run ourselves ragged chasing these butchers all around the territory. Now, I'm also sorry to say that some of my own people have joined them. Are you still interested? I'm in, Colonel. Captain? If you can't write, make your mark here. Well, I believe all right, just for the practice. I do. That horse here is about near run out, soldier. You chasing somebody? <laughs> Actually, I'm leaving. Give me your reins. What are you talking about? The gunfire just might spook her. Sharp, gentlemen. Dismissed. Captain. I've been looking over the camp. Colonel's right. These boys are beat. They couldn't hold up under a major engagement, and I believe they know it. Let me tell you something, Cole. My men are prepared for any hardship, any engagement, at any time. I hear one word out of your mouth to the contrary, you'll be back in stables forking. Hey, do I make myself clear, mister? Yes, sir. Fine. You should not have done that. Call, you be ready for a briefing in 15 minutes. I'll be ready when you put that back where it belongs, Captain. You just get ready. You mean to tell me you agree with him? I do admire a man who refuses the easy dollar. After a while, you might feel that way too. That is not the point. There is something else I wanted to bring up. I'd like you to move back in here while Newt's gone. I have a room at the hotel, thank you. Miss Cole. Mr. Mosby. I hear your husband is working for the army. You heard correctly. Hmm. They're tracking down a gang of murderers. That's something I'm sure you'd support. Certainly. We must all be on our guard against the criminal element. 
Nonetheless, his absence is regrettable so soon after your wedding. Yes, regrettable that he is absent. However, admirable that he is risking his life for the good of this community. There are too many who only seek profit from it. I must say, ma'am, you're awfully harsh and quick to judge, especially for one with so little experience of life. Well, whatever experience I may or may not have, Mr. Mosby, my conscience is clear. Thank you. See you again next Monday, Mrs. Merritt. No, you stop right there. You got sneaky eyes and I have a pretty good aim with this chaw. Yes, ma'am. You call that a bean? It ain't a bean. You need a good substitute for a bean. I wouldn't give you a nickel for the lot. May I? You're absolutely right. I'll just put them back then. Okay, sneaky eyes. <laughs> you win. Thank you for your patronage, Mrs. Coffee. You're feeling poorly, ma'am. She's burning up with fever. Got a doctor hereabouts? Well, Ephraim Cleves fills in, but he's off visiting his brother up Miles City Way. No one else. Hey! Colonel, we got Webster. Murder, Colonel? A murderer. Damn it. It's getting to be an epidemic around here. <clears throat> Here's some things from town. Weren't time to gather much when the army moved us. Much obliged to you and Mr. Mosby for all your kindness. Mr. Mosby? Yes, ma'am. He brought us over some food and clothing this morning. He says he knows what it's like to be without a home. I see. I'll bring these things over to Mrs. Coffee. Well, I ain't sure that's a good idea, ma'am. We can't do nothing with her. Get away from me. I brought some blankets and food for you, ma'am. I ain't up to repeating myself, girl. I'll just leave them out here for you, then. She's very sick. She needs help. Saying's one thing, miss, and doing's another. Did she point that rifle at you? Yes. In her state, like as not, she'll use it. We just been setting the food out there in front of the tent like that. Sometimes she eats it, most of the time not. Does she have any family, Mr. Tyler? In her time, she's uh, buried her husband and every last one of her children. I reckon she figures it's her turn now. I 
abhor this kind of thing. Ready? Hey! Desertion, Mr. Call. It's like blood flowing from a wound in all our posts. If I don't put a stop to it quickly, we won't have the strength to protect a town, let alone this territory. Then God help the territory. Ah! God help the territory. Barry. A roll call this morning. Three more desertions. I want an end to this. Colonel. It's done, sir. And I'm ready to go after the rest of them. Mr. Call, you will track these men. Captain Middleton will accompany you, and I don't care how you do it. Just bring them back here, you understand? Colonel, if I may speak frankly, I've got no argument with tracking a, a gang of murder and thieves and the like. But deserters... Sir, I didn't sign on for that. Damn it, Call. You follow orders! That's enough, Captain. Mr. Call, you signed on to protect this territory. And I expect you to do your duty. Captain. San Francisco, Wichita, Seattle, Fort Myer. Just a few of the places reporting outbreaks of cholera. This is inhuman, Father. The fact is, we don't know it's cholera. Hannah, if it is cholera, the entire community could be wiped out. You can't blame people for being scared. We cannot just leave those people out there without help. We have to do something. <sighs> Cooked meals are being left by the boundary three times a day. Mr. Tyler takes them in. This town is doing all it can. You won't lose me, Father. This is really about Mother, isn't it? Your mother was a beautiful woman, Hannah. And she came down with the fever. I don't think she ever knew how much I loved her, how much I needed her. I want you to stay away from that camp. Go any faster? I'm telling you, they'd be halfway to Canada by now. There's three of them. And to tell you the guy's truth, I wouldn't want an ambush right now. They're deserters. They're riding as fast as they can. They're not laying some ambush. You know, there is such a thing as being overly cautious. Horse had a gallop, would leave about 
Ten feet separation in a stride. This horse is barely at a trot. You actually trying to tell me you're afraid of catching up with these men? Oh, my lord. What is it? Dismount fast. You let them know you're still alive. Well, where are they? They're up the slope. To the right, about 150 yards. Do you see them? <laughs> How the hell did you know they were there? I saw the grass. Trampled grass straightened up like that, like a hair on the back of my neck. Two, maybe a hole is here, and I was gonna go around back. No, I'm doubting that. Sound logic. For you, maybe. These are frontier recruits. They deserted because they wanted to live longer. Why risk a straight bullet now? Cover me. Come on. I guess we got no choice but to wait. How long you been up here? Three months. You ever been shot at before? No, I have not. Well, you're up there with the best of them, Middleton. Well, thank you, Carl. What are you doing out here, anyways? Orders. You see this here uniform? You put it on, you, you become a part of something larger, something better. Seems like a lot to live up to. What is it? See that dust up there? Yeah. I reckon those are our men. We can go. By the wire, Miss Cole. Mr. Tyler? Mr. Tyler? I believe he's come down with the fever, too. Do you mean to tell me these people can't even come out and collect these things? I'm sorry, ma'am. But it appears not. No, I'm sorry, sir. You cannot just leave them in there to starve. Excuse me. Please don't do that. You see. I can't let you out if you do. Get back. You shouldn't be here. A little late for that, Mr. Tyler. What are you looking at? It wasn't always like this, you know. Time was, there wasn't a boy's eyes I couldn't turn. Don't seem so long ago, neither. I believe you. You're lying. That's all right. Time put its map on you whether you wanted to or not. The stories you must have inside of you. The stories? <laughs> Well, that's all it is. I reckon you'll have some of your own soon enough. Tell you the truth, Mrs. Coffey, I can't wait. <laughs> all right.
That didn't have to happen. We could have gotten in closer and taken them alive. Easy, friend. There ain't nothing in my hand but sweat. Drop it. They were too weak to feed themselves. They would have starved to death. Couldn't let that happen. I know. Thanks. No, thank you. It's pretty country, ain't it? Hell, it's the only reason I joined the damn army, so I could look at it. Never thought I'd be seeing it like this, though. I just wanted to be a gardener. Captain here. He wants to be a general, don't you, Middleton? We got a long ride back. You just take it easy. Hey, you can't go in there. Not another step, so. Uh. There's nothing you can do here. Except be of assistance. You're not going to be much help to anyone. You don't get yourself some rest. Come on. Let me have a look at your patients. I believe it was the older woman got it first. Clementine. Clementine, this is a friend of mine, Mr. Mosby. He just wants to take a look at you. Ah, my Clementine, that is a beautiful name. One of my choice. Wasn't my mother's. Well, then I compliment your mother. She died a long time ago. Then I compliment her memory, Clementine. Tell me, do you... Do you feel pain anywhere? Only in my backside. I've been sitting here so long. You just relax now. Oh. Gentlemen, I apologize for my earlier behavior, but I'm wondering if I might ask one of you to head down the street and pick up a few things. Whatever they haven't got at the general store, you may find in my saloon. If the 
This is cholera, Mr. Mosby. You know what we might be facing. Well, if such is the case, I can think of no one else with whom I'd rather spend eternity. You are a very strange man, Mr. Mosby. <laughs> Get yourself some rest. I'll tend the others. Them was a bad bunch of two you killed up there. Shouldn't have no regret for what you done. I don't. Why'd you do it? Tired, mostly. Bad food. Tired of being marched around all the time. Most of the time being scared. Things I've seen. And done. Some nights I can't stop myself from crying. And I'm all shaking like it's winter in July. Kevin? What are they gonna do to me? You, sir, will be executed by a firing squad. Well, hell! It ain't like I killed nobody. When them boys ambushed you, mine were the shots you couldn't see. I was shooting clear over your heads. Could have waited on that, Middleton. Now, later, not gonna make a difference. Yeah, well, you just try riding in his saddle. company. Me and Albert, we enlisted together. Captain, what are you gonna do with me now? Captain. It's 
no sense in that. Not anymore. Get on your horse and go. I said go. Leave it. It's done now. Wait! This man must be executed for desertion. Now, is that the uniform talking, or you? Come on, call. Get out of my way. Newt, I got my duty. Come on, Newt. Well, then you better do it. Hannah, it's Miss Coffee. Her fever's broken. It isn't cholera, Hannah. It's over. So much to tell you. I've got a lot to tell you too. <laughs> I, saw, I saw some things. I saw things while I was out there. Are you home to stay? I mean, is this uh, just a leave or something? I'm here to stay. <laughs> we got a house to finish, as I recall.
I don't know why it is, but some of the things that happened in Montana half a century ago are more clear in my mind than what I had for breakfast this morning.